Well, welcome. We're going to find ourselves in the Celestial Toy Room um, and playing by the rules. Uh, I'm joined by Peter Purvis, uh, who was on hand to take much of the action whilst his leading man was on holiday for this story. Well, not he was away for this story. So, um, hello, Peter. It's the Celestial Toymaker, which I recall you telling me was was a favourite of yours. You I, I, I loved it. it. It was nice. We, we had uh, Jackie and I had sort of nice leading roles in it, and we had all these rather difficult games to play. And if we didn't play them properly and we didn't uh, succeed with them, uh, then we died. That was the whole point of it. I think things like the Crystal Maze were inspired by this. Uh, And, of course, whilst we're doing these games... which this will be fully explained by Billy Bunter. Actually, he's not allowed to be called Billy Bunter, but (laughs) that's who the character is. Um, But whilst we're doing this, the Doctor, who is at the moment just a hand because he's been dematerialised away by the Celestial Toymaker, uh, is playing the Trilogic game which he must get right or we all die. So there's a lot of jeopardy in this. But unusual jeopardy for Doctor Who because it's this slightly sort of surreal abstraction of a child's um, it's totally it? totally bizarre. We've got the Queen of Hearts, and we've got you know Car- Carmen Silvera giving a wonderful performance there. Robert Stevens, R- not uh, Ro- Ca- uh, uh, Campbell Singer, Campbell Singer, and Peter Stevens. Peter, then this is Peter Stevens. Yes, yes. Oh, Peter played several parts. He also played the clown, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. And then Carmen and Campbell did different different roles that's right. in each episode. Yeah, but, that's right. Uh, and we had to succeed. And Michael Goff being absolutely sinister and wonderful. And a casting coup uh, for, for, for this uh, juncture in the show's history and his career, because he was, you know, he was he was an actor that uh, not short of offers. Absolutely. And um, it largely has this, to carry it on his own. This game is just brilliant. I love the Trilogic game. Now, you kept it, didn't you? I did. So these lovely pieces I had. But you see, the the toy maker keeps on mucking around the game, so it's confusing the Doctor. If you keep your logic, you can get it right. So I think it's 136 moves or 137 moves to complete the Trilogic game properly without making any any errors. Uh, But the toy maker keeps on moving it to a different position. And so he has to pick up where do we go from here. makes it very, very difficult. And if he gets it wrong, We die because that's the challenge. And it's a lovely performance from Michael. So there's a little chair for Stephen. And there must be a little chair for Dodo somewhere. And there's also a voiceover at the end by a BBC announcer um, distancing uh, the character of Cyril from Billy Bunter. I think they'd (laughs) they'd had a stern warning from a lawyer or two. And so they actually have to... Spell, spell out that it's any 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 uh, any similarity is entirely coincidental. <laughs> so then this game, you know, we had to play it, we had to do it. And there's a logic to it. I can't remember what the logic was, but she's got to the right place. But we have to play the game, throw the dice. You spend, you do have to spend a lot of this story reminding Dodo that. It... <laughs> <laughs> that it's lethal because she keeps getting carried away and go oh this is fun <laughs> you have to keep reminding her that you might all die she's quite slow on the uptake is poor old dodo it has to be said and jackie wasn't in the show for for that long um and doesn't uh, doesn't uh, do the sort of convention circuit or the interviews and anything so so tell us about Jackie, because she's sure, a she, she, elusive she, figure. She, I, I, I didn't get to know her very well. Um, she joined for, was it this serial? No, she joined for the Ark, for the, yeah. um, which was a nice serial to do. A uh, wonderful story, but not terribly well executed. Um, but uh, no, I didn't get to know her terribly well. And then we did this serial. And then the next serial is The Gunfighters. So we, we had three good serials together. And as I say, in that time, we were good working colleagues. I think we play well together. I think we work well together. Um, but we didn't really socialise together. She's got a good look, hasn't she? The sort of yeah, tomboyish. She, yeah, she, I think she's, uh, I thought she was a terrific person. You know, great character uh, as a companion. 
I'll tell you, your stripes and she spots, and I'm, I'm not sure. St- I'm not sure that's significant. Class, <laughs> I hated I hated those stripes. They were terrible. They're not too bad from the back. I look I look particularly broad and strong from the back. I don't think they suit me from the front. <laughs> but I think she looks great. Then nice sort of Mary Quantish style skirt. Did you have much say in your costume? Or not really. And any preference? What? Not really. It was whatever was. No, I mean, it, we were offered something and that was it. Whereas his costume's quite uh, quite the thing, isn't it? So. It's, it's tremendous. And you notice that the Billy Bunter character here is called Cyril. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Not Billy. Not Billy. Absolutely not Billy. Absolutely not Billy. We but were... I don't think he ever was. don't think he ever was called that, but that's who he looked like. And... Uh... It's directed by um, Bill Sellers on his only Doctor. Bill Sellers, yes. Funnily enough, I met <coughs> Bill Sellers again. He uh, he was running a museum in Richmond in uh, Yorkshire. Ah. Oh. Um, I can't remember what the museum was. I went there, theatre museum. Lovely Georgian theatre in Richmond. And he was running the museum there. I just happened, and happened to go in there. I... I, I Yeah, and this was his. This was his one. You have a sort of run of one-off directors because Michael Imerson did the arc, didn't come back, and didn't direct for television ever again. And then Bill Sellers doing this, Rex Tucker doing the next one. Yes, uh, yeah. none of none of whom did Doctor Who again. No, no. Christopher Barry did a few. Yes, he did. He did. He 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 was your. He saw you off in the Savages. He saw me off in the Savages. He enjoyed working with me. I like Christopher very much. Very nice man. Very sad that uh, that he should die so tragically. It was a great shame. Did you catch up with him at the 50th? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I met him on and off over the years. He lived out in Oxfordshire. Um, and what do you think a good director for Doctor Who needed to have in their arsenal to pull it off well? Uh, whew, that's a good one. Uh, well, I mean, the, the imaginative element is covered by the script, one hopes. Um, but the way you construct it, because every shot is precisely chosen, because we're doing this multi camera, you're cutting between the cameras, and the shots are very precise. And for example, there, the cut there, the camera's got to be in the right position to see that we get hit. All those things have to be right. And it's there's a lot of activity in the studio behind the camera. Cameras moving, sound booms. Moving. We didn't have radio mics. All the sound was done with a large boom on a, a big triangular tripod with wheels that's moved around and it extends out to get a microphone. There's a microphone above us picking up our sound. And, of course, that mustn't come into shot. Which, And I think some pe- people forget this with, with acting on television, is that as well as having to, you know, convincingly say the lines and do the emotion. It's actually a technical job, isn't oh, it? Oh, very, very technical. Very technical. And sometimes, you know, you're not even... You, because of the angle of shot that they're trying to get, you're not necessarily looking at the person that you're supposed to be looking at because the camera wants to get a particular angle on you. Various things like that. You've just got to be precise. But, I mean, it's a job like any other. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're an actor, you know these things and you do it technically. And it uh, d- doesn't stop the creative elements in any way at least i hope it doesn't and i mean you're in your period of doctor who you're working pretty much every week of the year it was like weekly rep and luckily my training was weekly rep i did weekly rep in barrow in furnace and i did two years there doing 96 plays in two years it's a lot of work yeah you know, some of the parts were small some of them were big you know, you had leading parts in some, small parts in others. You go uh, playing anyone from a twelve-year-old to a, an eighty-six-year-old, which I did. Um, it's uh, d- great fun, but the, the intensity of learning, getting it accurately right, doing the moves right, not falling over the furniture, and getting on and off stage—all those things apply when you're doing television as well. It's exactly the same. And this was weekly rep, but it's only a twenty-five-minute script. Mm. It's not an hour and a half's play or a two-hour-long play. That's true, and you're not do yeah you're not doing it every every night. 
But the, the technical elements are quite interesting, really, because the, the, w when you do the technical run through for the producer and for the lighting man, the sound man, they, all, all the rest of the technical guys who come in, you've got a group of about six people being the camera. So you're acting to a lot of people who are walking around with big sheets of paper and stuff. You've got you've got to you've got to know your onions. You really do. Mm. Single camera shooting is is a much simpler option. You don't get the rehearsal time though. At least we rehearsed for you know four days and then we went into the studio. So and interest we your 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 uh, tenure on the show. So a lot of regime changing, and 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 now we have Innes Lloyd and Jerry Davis have come in to replace um, John Wiles and Donald Tosh, and with John Wiles having wanted to replace Hartnell, Innes Lloyd tried to replace William Hartnell in this serial by when the Doctor reappears at the end, having him reappear as somebody else. I understand that that's what was supposed to happen, but it never happened that way. But he didn't have to wait long. No, Innes got his way about. Four serials later. Um, and he actually did a, a clean sweep because you went and Jackie went and, and then William Hartnell went. Yeah. Uh, oh, and Peter Stevens has just gone and ends up as a... It's a lovely performance from him as oh, Cyril, it is. isn't it? Excellent. Excellent. He's dead, love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. He's dissolved into and out. He's blown up. Well, he's hoist by his own petard because he he's made it slippery. Look, you do very good slippery acting here. Look at that. Um, yes, he'd um, he tried to sabotage you guys and forgot and slipped of off himself. No, I mean this. Th these are these were real perils. This is why I say things like. Uh, uh, the Crystal Maze was inspired by this. I'm sure it was. And there was another series that my, my colleague from uh, Blue Peter, Leslie Judd, did. I can't remember what it was called. Oh, but that was a, a, the, a whole the, series the, of games the, the that were just like game. this. Yes. Yes. That's right. I remember the adventure game. I think had, the adventure had game, had the straight, like straight from yeah. this. Straight from this. They never quite did another story um, like this for... John Wiles certainly, because although this was produced by Nas Lloyd, it was it was it was uh, under, Genesis was under Wiles and Tosh, who certainly have quite an eclectic run of stories. If you think if you think of something like the Gunfighters, which is a sort of pastiche, and then you've got this, which is surreal, and then you've got the hard science fiction of the art, they've they've got quite a broad palette. Absolutely, they? they have, and the massacre, which was you know a stunning piece of appalling history, mm. you know, and then the Dalek Master. But I mean, you can go through. The, the mall, all the time I was in it, I think the stories were exceptionally different and interesting. And you see, I, I don't have a costume. You know, most, most of the other characters have a costume that they always wore, mm. which they, you know, when you go to conventions and things and you'll see people in the costumes. They're never in a costume that I wore, except the striped shirt occasionally. And occasionally you'll see someone dressed in Dodo's costume, but that's the only one. Yours, the stripy one from this. Yeah, and the spotty one for her. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the first time we've seen William Hartnell this episode. Um, he's been away. He's not in the previous two. His hand, that's right. His, his hand, hand only. Yeah, played by... Disembodied an, hand. By an actor called Albert Ward, who seemed to specialise in being William Hartnell's hand double. <laughs> uh, history hasn't recorded what happened to Mr Ward, sadly. But... Uh, and he's so he's... Back, back off a bit of a break... Um, which I guess he knew, because even though he wasn't as old as he played, he wasn't a, a very well man, was he? I wasn't aware that he wasn't. Uh, he hid it well. I'm, I'm fascinated by it, by a lot of these things, because, again, this is a, 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 an episode I've only ever seen once. It's uh, it's nice to uh, to see it again. Yes, the dinky robot with the telly in its tummy is 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 a nice uh, is a nice piece of design, isn't it? The, the, it's it's a very cleverly designed serial. This one, the, the the sets were terrific, the games were terrific. The whole idea, I think, is is wonderful. And and how about Michael Goff? Did you socialise with him much? No, no. no. No, he was, he was, I wouldn't say he was aloof, but he, he kept himself a little bit distant. 
he was he was amusing at times, and uh, you know, but he he wasn't uh, he wasn't a social animal. And of course, we did. We rarely played with him. Yes, <laughs> we had. I mean, I had a great time with uh, with Carmen. Yeah, uh, I mean, and, and um, uh, Campbell Singer. I mean, great fun, great fun. Um, well, and they had the, the the joy of playing different characters every episode. So that's right. Nice for an actor to be able to show a bit of versatility. And Carmen, of course, before she became. The household name that she oh became. absolutely absolutely but she was quite well known then and she she great sense of humor she was always laughing she oh uh, she was a lot of fun to work with a lot of fun sometimes hard to keep a straight face and how about peter peter stevens Do you... uh, he's the one that i have least remembrance of i i, I honestly can't remember anything about him I can remember his character very well mm. and the various parts he played as a clown and everything else, but I can't remember him. Well, it was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. And did you, I mean, did you socialise much with the, the sort of produ production team? and, and, the, and the... Dougie Canfield I did uh, earlier. Um, not on this one, certainly not. One or two of the people in the gunfighters next uh, I knew socially, um, but uh, no, it, it's you know it was it was a job. You mm -hmm. went in, did it as I say, like weekly rep, and uh, five days of working together, and then you know weekend with the, with your own family and and back to work. So I mean, no, there wasn't a lot of time, but uh, I did socialise with Bill, and mm -hmm. as I say we used to he used to come to my flat. He also uh, we'd take him out from the odd Indian meal, certainly. Once a month, we would take him out. He had a favourite place, so we used to take him there. And uh, I got on. I, I, I say I got on very well with him. But I mean, how, you can't socialise with everybody. No, you can't. no, you just can't. And you find in gaps in rehearsal, you know, you talk to the people who aren't on set at the time. And if you were working mostly on set with people, then those were probably the people that you socialised with. And so it was Carmen mostly that uh, I chatted with. And uh, yeah, you mentioned you knew people from the gunfighters. Uh... William Herndell still has the same flat that he had I know, when he in, was in the gunfight. In, in Camden Town, Camden. yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, I didn't get to see him when he came over, unfortunately. He was here for a short period, wasn't he? Yes. We're, Back we're, end of last year. We're talking Ike Clanton from the gunfighters. He lives lives in Thailand, but he still has his, his gaff in Camden. He does indeed. A fascinating fellow. And it's an interesting thing, is it? Because if you do meet up, it's it's extraordinary. It's that sort of business, isn't it? That you cannot see somebody for 45 years. And you pick up the conversations if you were talking only the other day. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I experienced that with a, a lot of friends that are long distance friends that I don't see for, you know, a couple of years. And then you're up with them again and it's it's like you've never been away. It's uh, it's very nice, that, that sort of situation. Well, and you must be friendly now with, people from Doctor Who that you never worked with even on Doctor Who, but that you... Well, I met through conventions, conventions and things. Yes, things. exactly. Exactly. Yes. And was the... I, I'm sure I recall once reading somewhere it said, oh, and P Peter Purvis has said this will be his last interview or last convention. Was there a time when you'd felt that you you needed to take a step back from, from Doctor Who? No, I, uh, th there was a time when I was not involved in Doctor Who at all. And I only started taking an interest after Mark Ayres got me to start doing the, the commentaries on the original soundtrack. Yes, yeah. Uh, and when I did those, uh, then I started to take an interest. And I went to my first convention up in Manchester back in the 90s, I guess. I can't, I can't remember the exact time. And that was the first one I went to, and I didn't go to another one for about a year after that. And now I do go to quite a lot. Um I've got a, I've got four in America that's coming up. I've got, wow, and uh, one or two in this country. Yes, the American trips are nice. I, I did two last year. I've got two more in November this year. We're talking twenty sixteen, by the way, and I've got two in early twenty seventeen as well. So I'm going to Gallifrey. I'm going to Chicago. I'm going to Baltimore, and I'm going to Long Island. So those are all nice. They're they're good fun to do. 
And what and what did your family? Well, I was interested because sometimes people what their family make of this sort of strange Doctor Who life. But of course, you kept it in the family because your son worked on. Uh, he only worked on one series yeah, with, uh, with Sylvester. Sylvester. Yeah. yeah, which they filmed at Rutland Water. Yes, my my son's a first assistant director, and uh, he's working on EastEnders at the moment. And uh, he's been working on Doctors and various other things. I mean, he's he's keeping busy. Thank goodness. It's always. Difficult, you know, for a freelance, and uh, he is. But, uh, yeah, he does that. His wife works on East End as well. She's a property buyer. So, yes, they're not, uh, there, are, there are a select few, of, but, you know, fathers and sons who've, <laughs> who've worked on Doctor Who, so it's yeah. a good... It's a, in, in fact, the current production designer of Doctor Who, Michael Pickwood, is the son of William Mervyn, oh, who was in Doctor Who just after you'd been in it. Yes. And his... And his daughter has also worked on the show, so they've got three generations. Gosh, yeah, uh, yeah. And this is where, yes, they they trick the toy maker. They they play him at his own game uh, by uh, uh, activating the game as they leave, and thus he is he is consigned to Doctor Who history. And you managed to escape, uh, and you uh, you took that home with you, but it was a bit cursed. Did well, I. I felt it was. I, After a year, I threw it away. Well, not after a year. It was longer than that. It was a good 18 months later. I threw it in the bin because I thought it was bringing me bad luck because I just wasn't getting any work. And the following day, I was interviewed for Blue Peter, which wow. was a ten and a half year engagement when I finally got the job. So you can read Make what you like that, into that. You will. Uh. <laughs> Well, but I, it was a great game, and I, I, it was a very good talking point to have in the house. And people, lots of people tried it. No one could do it. Right. Not first off. I could do it eventually, very you know, And you just got to keep your concentration going. And if you'd hung on to it, I think eBay would, it would be good for quite a treat on eBay, I it should It might think. indeed. And this is, of course, the era of the show where a story doesn't end... Um, but but leads into the next one. Leads so you into have to the have next a cliffhanger one. even yes. at the end. The, the the interesting thing about Doctor Who at this time was that the TARDIS went where it liked. The Doctor had no control over where it ended up. He couldn't guide it to so and so or back. So if you went anywhere, you couldn't go back to there once you'd left it because he couldn't control it. It had this element of there was an element of serendipity about it. It went where it liked. Um, so we never knew, and he had to check whether it was habitable, whether it had air that we could breathe wherever we landed, whether it was, oh, sometimes it was in the in Britain, but sometimes it was elsewhere, and sometimes it was on distant planets, and that was fine. And he couldn't control where it went, and I thought that was the best thing. Now, you see, this is leading straight. He's got toothache. That's really hurt him. So he's going to go to the dentist when we join the gunfighters. And hence becomes Doc Holiday. Yep, good stuff. And that's a that's that's a slightly restored piece because the uh, episode as it came back didn't have the caption that said next week. Oh, so right. they've done that with a bit of yes. bit of magic. They've done some good work on it, and and the quality of these reconst well they're not reconstructions, but the quality of these the pictures absolutely ace. I think they're wonderful. Cheers, Toby. Thanks. Well, we think you're wonderful. Thanks, Peter.